What is going on guys? My name is Rage and we are back today with a beginner video on some tips and tricks in finding success in the game early, especially since I've only been playing for about a month now. You know, I've wanted to do this video for you guys, uh, especially the, since this is all fresh. And as well, I hope this is able to help you uh, further your progression as you start off or if you're trying to uh, find some quick tips here. So uh, that being said, you guys, I'm going to start things off um, taking a look at more of the, the actual building aspect of it. Then we'll dive into the everyday and then lastly finish up with the exploration and story mode. So start Starting things off, the Cookie Castle right here is pretty much one of the most important buildings that I would recommend. Uh, make sure you guys are continually checking the requirements and seeing if you can boost it as high as possible. Reason being is that it does allow for other buildings to be built following. And as well, these guys here, uh, these cookie houses actually provide and build EXP for you. So um, with these mansions that you can get later on upgraded, the more of these you have de are determined by how high your cookie castle is. So that's why it's important. And they generate EXP over time. And that's extremely important, especially now when you're trying to level and, and train up your characters uh, to progress further into story mode. Uh, something else to note that's really important uh, that's unlocked later on the castle level 7 is the Sugar Gnome Factory. And I really like this one because uh, there's a lot of useful features in this mode, such as improving the production speed of different buildings. But as well, the, my personal favorite has been this easy goods collection here that you see. And essentially what it can allow us to do is collecting all the goods from one tap. So this is just going to save a boatload of time, especially when you're progressing in the game. I'll give you an example here. So if I hit any of my production buildings right now, um, it's actually going to automatically collect everything that's available and that's just so handy especially when you're cycling through another useful tip is if you aren't really uh, into clicking it at all you know you can just open into a building and what i use i like to use is these arrows to the left and right so uh left of this building you can just hit left and it'll actually rotate to the next building so this is a very quick way to navigate and go through and see uh which queues are up which aren't and uh, I didn't know this until later on in the game, but at the beginning, it wasn't obvious to me. I was actually manually clicking all of the buildings, and I found this just saves so much time, especially uh, it does group productions uh, similar to each other. So I have two milk wells. They go back to back if I actually rotate through them. So that's extremely helpful when you're just trying to save time and going through your queues. Another really important building to have later on uh, starting off is when you clear this area over here, uh, it actually does open uh, access to this harbor, which then will actually take you to the tropical soda island a castle level five so uh, with this area it actually allows you to go through and explore uh, using these certain trinkets that you're, are going to be available and as you unlock and beat these islands you're actually going to generate these uh, these islands that are able to help supplement more gold uh, more exp and as well as more stamina just overall so as you go through and unlock you have to you do have to win battles and they have this cute little area that's called the sun beds where once your characters go down they need to heal up so then you just restore them but essentially you want to beat as many islands as you can and further unlocking and that way it does give you really fruitful rewards too and the one thing to keep in mind too is you have to unlock these uh these re restoration islands where they actually allow you to have more access to pushing through so uh, something to be mindful of but overall uh, we want to take advantage of anything that can build resource for us over time especially uh since uh this is free to play and you want to maximize those resources Another key building I would recommend is actually going to be the uh, Seaside Market uh, combined with Tuke's uh, Trade Harbor. So this becomes accessible at Castle Level 8 once you actually explore this area and clear the trees. And then once you access it through here, this is the upgraded one, but I'll start with the Seaside Market. Seaside Market essentially allows you to trade the resources that you have currently for what you need. So uh, those two trinkets I was mentioning before with the with the island, uh, it is actually these two right here. Uh, so that's the Caramel Spyglass. And then as well, I can't buy this one anymore, but it's like the island map so uh, these two are generally used and this is one of the accessible areas that you can trade in some of your materials to actually get those and as well if you scroll to the right um, this is just a great way to see what you have and what you can actually trade in for so that way you can further supplement your lacking resources and the nice thing about the seaside market is that uh, you know there is always character shards and soul stones as well so you can definitely take a chance to actually uh, unlock them as well if you have the needed uh, and required materials so those are the, definitely three of the most important buildings, in my opinion, as well as uh, being able to navigate. But otherwise, just ensure, you know, uh, production is always happening, making sure that, you know, during your downtime, especially if you're sleeping, that you have upgrades or, or buildings being made because you want you do want to maximize that as much as possible, especially since this is, this is a time-based game. 
Next, we are going to talk about the everyday day to day in terms of what you should be trying to do uh, in terms of ensuring progression. And one being the Tree of Wishes. The Tree of Wishes uh, really, really is one of the best ways to get gold in the game. Essentially, you trade in your resources that you have. And you don't like what's available. You hit the refresh. I personally do want to save materials, so I always refresh on the ones that are a little bit lower on my side. But then you can see here by doing so, it actually does unlock these daily rewards to the left now. So then I'm going to open that up. And you actually get three chests per day. And the upgrades do get better. So this is the first daily one. Then we have another one that's larger. And then followed by the, the biggest one uh, being uh, 20 different wishes being made. So it does unlock a lot of uh, these rewards and chests. And as well, keep in mind, this is one of the, the ways to actually get gold in the game. So you do want to maximize that if you can. And I'd like to aim for that getting done because it does give you those limited trinkets and whatnot and furthering your progression. Next, uh, another good way is actually accessing the bounties, the Tower Suite Chaos, and obviously your guild battle. So by hitting this bottom right play button here, it actually does open up the daily adventure menu that we can see. And you can see it does flag for us what we can do, right? So today's bounties, it's always great for these ones to get the materials that you need, the powders to actually upgrade your cookie level skills. And that's really important because you're going to find that there is going to be... A, uh, a bottleneck that you hit eventually and you need to further that progression we have the kingdom arena here that's really useful uh going through and i always like to just see if i can at least fight someone that's similar power to me otherwise i'll hit refresh and you do want to uh, push as far as you can because you do get these trophies that eventually uh, further translate to medals here and if you hit the bottom left metal shop it does provide the opportunity to once again use these medals at the top to purchase these limited materials so i personally recommend with saving uh these medals to actually unlock characters such as an ancient hollyberry uh, just because you see for one shard it costs 200 metal excuse me uh for one shard, it costs 600 metal. So you do really want to save that over time. And it's going to be meaningful in the long term, especially when new ancients come into the game. Next, we got the uh, Tower of Sweet Chaos here. Uh, this is really good for EXP. What I've noted is that every time you get that first win, just see how much e e experience you're getting here. And just that, That's a very sizable portion, and you also get a 50% boost, especially when there's uh, burning time on. So, I mean, really encourage you guys to try to use these keys as much as possible to push them through. Uh, guild Battle is always good just to help your guild, but as well, being able to get rewards as a team. So that's pretty much everything that's covered then. So I do recommend you guys check, take your time and checking it out because it does provide a lot of upgrades for you every day. And then the last thing I did have not talked about is actually the Kingdom Pass here. So that's to the right. You can see it's highlighted in the red. And with the Kingdom Passes, we do have daily missions that actually allow us to have rewards as well on a daily level. So it's pretty straightforward. You honestly just go through the list here. And there's only six tasks per day. And you, when, essentially, when you get them done, it gives you more rewards. And especially unlocking more of this Kingdom EXP to further your level of progression. There's also going to be seasonal missions here. And then followed by season rewards. So uh, that just goes through as you play the game. But, I mean, uh, keep in mind, these are you know generally built uh, and, and expected to be done throughout the month as opposed to daily so i would recommend focusing on the daily and then the seasonal missions and rewards will come as you play uh, that's pretty much a wrap then for the building and everyday task, you guys. So last but not least, I did want to quickly touch base on some cookies here. So um, starting off, especially in the exploration mode, it's one of the best ways to actually further your level. But what I personally recommend starting off is there was a time when I was uh, starting the game and I wasn't sure who to invest in. It's just doing research, you know, um, whether that's going on Reddit, whether that's just going on Google and searching or watching some content creators on YouTube. I, what I did is before I even started investing in any character, I would just simply ask or research if the character has any usage in the game. It, you know, the reason I, I bring this up is because uh, characters uh, do, do require the EXP, and that's going to be quite limited as you level up. And that's why it's extremely important to level and invest in the right characters, so that way you can use them, whether it's PvE or PvP. Uh, it's ensuring, making sure that your EXP is going to be effectively used. So that's one thing. Another thing to note is also the treasures. You know, I found three really useful treasures uh, through my progression. I do want to talk about each one of them just because of how powerful they all are. So starting things off, this old program scroll, it's passive. It increases increases everyone's attack on your team and it stays consistent throughout the round i would recommend if you guys have access to this i do recommend getting it and it bolsters your team's offensive ability ensuring uh, further success next we have one that's cooldown reduction called the squishy jelly watch this one's really good because it just compounds your cooldown ensuring your abilities are used more often and again it's a passive and applies for all your cookies so that's extremely powerful Lastly, we do have the Gatekeeper here, the Gatekeeper Ghost Horn, and that increases your overall defense. So we got one for offense, defense, and now as well as cooldown. So, I mean, with this, with those three, that's generally found me a lot of success in the story mode. So I would recommend checking those out. 
And as well, you guys, in the gacha here, um, something that you may, players may overlook is the fact that whenever you do go through the gacha, you do actually generate these mileage points here in the bottom left of the pig. And these mileage shop points are really effective because it, they allow you the opportunity to selectively choose shards that you need. So maybe toward, you're building towards an epic character that you're really interested in or a lot of players are talking about and excited about. An opportunity to take advantage of that, right? So uh, you can definitely use this to actually buy the individual shards together. And over time, when you have enough, you can ultimately unlock the character so that's really really useful um that's all i have for today you guys uh, these are all tips and tricks i kind of wish when i started off the game but you know now that i know i want to share this with you guys hope this is able to provide some insight and further your progression uh thank you guys hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one